<laughs> Welcome to our second season two stream. Uh, so with me today, I have Evil Mojo Martini. I am Evil Mojo Alyssa. We're going to be going over everything you, that you can expect in season two. Oh no, I can hear myself. That's not good. Okay, sorry about that. There was an <laughs> echo. <laughs> Did not want to hear that. Um, all right, so we had a stream last Monday, and I just kind of wanted to do a TLDR or TLDW, too long, didn't watch, sure. of what we covered then. So can you give us kind of an overview of everything we talked about? Absolutely. So last stream, we focused on kind of the systematic changes that were going to be applied to our item store and also kind of some widespread changes that were coming to the loadout uh, cards, specifically loadout cards that had to deal with reveal, loadout cards that had to deal with um, anti-heal or shield damage, um, and how they are being removed from loadouts and will be replaced with new cards with new effects. Um, and then also we saw after that stream some people that were concerned about, oh, what's changing with the card system, right? Um, and I just wanted to be very clear, like, the card system is still the exact same, guys. Like, no worries. Um, it's still, you know, uh, decks of, actually, I guess they're loadouts, um, with five points each scaling. Um, All the cards are still free. You'll still acquire them and level up yeah. talents the exact same way. What we're, what we're talking about is really just what the cards do. Um, and only certain cards at that that we're talking about changing. Uh, but yeah, so it was item store, uh, the loadout cards with certain effects that were being moved, and then the going down from four to three talents, mm -hmm. um, which was a big, big ad. Yeah, and why exactly, just I know we talked about this in depth last Monday, but why, what is the reasoning behind going down from four to three talents? Uh, it's more sustainable, right? Um, you get stronger, uh, better uh, options to choose from, and ultimately the fourth talent was added around a certain patch that will not be named um, that basically f kind of forced forced our hand card pun in in some ways that we're like okay if the way you play paladins is now going to be unlocking cards and putting cards together then we needed extra legendary to do that um not the case anymore guys like so we're removing that we get sounder designed cards that were more ingrained with the champion um but for this stream mm -hmm. what we wanted to talk about specifically is the more ability specific champion specific balance specific aspects coming in season two so we've got some really cool things to talk about um and kind of high level right uh paladins we always always want to keep paladins uh generally where it's at in terms of of gameplay because we've survived a really long time as a game um for a number of reasons but we're very proud of the gameplay systems that we've built we're very proud of the the way that our players come in and engage and compete with other players um so managing these like character things in and about is all in the goal of like making sure that 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 intensity that s skill requirement is is always present in our title and with that segue of the skill requirement i'm actually going to go to the first change uh, which is for Khan. You may know him as the Primus of House Ico, the power armor wearing dominant frontline, um, highly prioritized in the competitive scene, uh, will be receiving a change to his ultimate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, specifically, um, is largely staying the same except for the first part, which is going to now require you to hit a shot basically so in first person because typically right now for all my con players you guys know that um once your ultimate is charged and you're in range of an enemy you get the little ui kind of hud heads up display mm -hmm. indicator and then pressing your ultimate will pull the player that that is around that's not the case anymore now it's going to apply um, in a similar mechanic as a lot of our other instant trace abilities do. Think like a Maldamba heal, right? It's You cl click a button with your target near your reticle, uh, and then you see an effect play out. And in this case, the effect is the grab. So um, in first person, you're going to see a quick kind of like hand animation, and then if you hit that initial trace... Uh, then it's going to transition to third person where he's going to have his hand out here and then pull his victim towards him. Um, Seeing so. a lot of excitement in chat about this. 
Good, 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 good. Lots and also, of, yes, finally. <laughs> also, some buff Mave. Interesting. We'll see where we'll see what go with that. Um, so, so Khan's ultimate isn't the only <laughs> thing that's changing though. So there were a lot of questions about Maeve in the last stream, and we kind of touched on her, but we didn't go too far in depth. But today we can actually talk about some changes coming to Nine Lives. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, Maeve is an interesting flank in that she holds some qualities that other flanks do not, and is also missing some qualities that other flanks have. Specifically, if you look at our, our collection of flanks, um, for the most part, they have very strong and discreet moments of survival and, you know, high burst damage and lethality uh, up close. Maeve trades that discreet window of survivability for more mobility and uh, a larger range being that she has these projectiles. Granted, they have some drop off and are separated by a burst. Um, but she can use this to her advantage where other flanks are more subject to fall off and short range abilities. Now, what moves Maeve in terms of efficacy is either lethality, what we saw when uh, the Street Justice was far more used, and then we relocated it to be specifically in Execute Talent, um, and also took a lot of the emphasis off of her damage reduction. Now, flanks that are able to stack persistent amounts of high DR and just maintain this over the time is not our goal to make. Um, flanks generally are high risk, high reward, and can use uh, their tools to protect themselves. And originally, May, well, like, like originally, originally, when Maeve shipped, um, she was more mobile, she was more lethal, um, and had larger ranges on her movement abilities. Now, due to how these changes have kind of affected her and when she's been viable when she hasn't been viable uh the first knob that we're going to turn in order to shine a little bit of light on her is we're going to throw back the uh heal on nine lives base now this syncs in tandem with the fact that we're removing the legendary or excuse me the talent card that formerly did this so straight up hitting q now is going to guarantee you a minimum of four or five hundred life i forgot what the exact value is it's um, back. <laughs> so you can choose to play aggressively with this ability um and use it to get that cooldown for that other pounce or that other prowl in order to pursue your your quarry or you can use it reaction reactively uh, as kind of like a healing potion, right? Hit that Q, guaranteed heal. Um, so it should be a good good addition to the Mave players of the world. <laughs> Going back to Khan's ultimate, uh, one viewer in chat asks, is there an yeah. ult refund if you miss the Khan ult, or will the ultimate just not go off if you miss it? Uh, there is a refund. You're going to be deducted 70% of your ultimate charge if you miss that shot. So there is a, there is a punishment. It's not just free. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, uh, we've got some changes to Sky. We talked about uh, kind of the reveal mechanic in the last episode, but this one actually applies to her smoke screen. That's correct. So big change, big change coming to Sky. I can't really emphasize um, the magnitude. Like, it's simple in nature. However, the result is pretty astonishing, just especially in internal play tests and some quick number crunching. Um, so we are... Removing the weird like line of sight blocking logic from smokescreen, it's now not gonna be something you want to like throw at enemies and then have this kind of inconsistency of okay if I step in it then if I'm on on Sky's team who can I see but if I'm an enemy and I step in it who can mm -hmm. I see like it's very unclear and we didn't like it and also the VFX were extremely cluttering the battlefield so we're removing that entirely um, and what we're changing is that. Now, Sky Smoke Screen, uh, you know how you, you guys know how when you throw it down, like it grants you stealth, and then also there's some cards in her loadout that also proc when it applies to you? Um, as that field persists, it's going to reapply those benefits to you at a certain rate. Um, meaning, I can throw it at my feet, go into stealth, fire some poison bolts, maybe a quick burst of the in hand on the wrist crossbow, and then not like a second later or 0.8 seconds later, it's going to re-put me back into stealth. Um, so effectively, you're going to be able to play around your smoke screen um, like it's kind of your safe zone. So intelligent positioning of this is going to allow you to establish um, like areas of safety 
in any part of the map, really. Now, your defensive mechanism here, right, is the fact that you can't be seen. Um, you're, you don't have immune, immunity. You don't have a large displacement movement ability. However, weaving in uh, intelligent use of the smokescreen stealth granting field, which is effectively what it is now, um, with your longer duration hidden, is going to allow you to pull off some really uh, cool stuff. Um, and then uh, also another addition to the, the logic of the smoke screen is that the benefits in your loadout from your loadout cards that would normally have applied to you once are now going to also apply to you every time the stealth reapplies to you base functionality. Um, it's a little bit of the nerdier granular side, right? But that means the heal card, uh, healing vapors, um, and also I believe dissipate, which is MS, movement speed. Um, every tick on that re-stealth application is going to hit you again. Um, far greater of a survival tool. You're going to have um, improve sustain. Um, so hopefully uh, now in, in, in conjunction with the recent weapon changes, um, I imagine we might see a lot more of our, our girl in purple. So a, a couple questions in chat. Uh, Fishnet asks, so just to clarify, it reapplies when you step back in? Uh, not necessarily when you step back in. It's just that field, every like, um, I think it's 0.8 or one second is going to basically trigger a hit on Sky if she is in it. So the first one will apply immediately when you throw it down, um, so you get all the benefits. And then you can, like I said, kind of like hover in it, right? And then you like weave your damage in between the stealth three applications. So you're like shooting, and then it stealths you. And you can relocate, and then you shoot. And when I say relocate, I mean within the field itself. Mm -hmm. um, but it should, uh, it should be very effective. We'll see how so it I plays. think that answers this other question. Um, if you go out of the zone, does the stealth immediately go away? Uh, no, the stealth still applies. It's still it's still the smoke screen um, stealth. So I believe it lasts for two or three seconds, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's pretty promising, guys. It's a lot of fun. All right, perfect. I'm still going through chat to see if we have any more questions. Um, but next up, Saris, we talked a little bit about how one of her talents is going to be integrated into her base kit last week. Um, but this week we have a little bit to talk about with Void of Bots. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, so oh, yeah, I guess you're totally right. We did talk about it last week. So if you if you tuned in last week, this may be not new news uh, for you, so I apologize. Um, but for the new viewers, uh, we are, like I said earlier, going from four to three talents. Um, and Saris is losing her Void Abides talent. Now, don't panic because we're taking that functionality and again, we're reintegrating it into her base restore mm -hmm. soul. So at base, Hera's up, uh, Hera, wow. What is a smite? Saris is now going to be able to heal multiple targets um, on her team for a, a fraction, a percentage of the initial heal value. It's going to chain, kind of like a chain heal. Um, but big change for Saris. Uh, essentially shores up one of her stronger weaknesses, which is also a factor in the fact like Void of Ides was just grossly picked compared to any more of her other talents. Um, that when we see when we see relationship amongst the talents like that, like it's pretty clear it's making up for a weakness in the character's kit that the other talents just can't compete with. Um, so now choosing between do I want the stun on Agony, um, the longer reach on for the mortal reach, or just become this like beast mode damage tank Saris with Soul Collector. Um, is a far more interesting choice than like having to pick Void of Bites because, oh, well, now I can heal my team versus not being able to because you're always going to have that AoE functionality. Uh, there are a couple of questions in chat about Mortal Reach. What are the plans for Mortal Reach? Uh, it's, still, it's still essentially the healing talent in the loadout, right? Um, now that you have the AoE functionality base, um, the opportunity cost of Mortal Reach for the other two is still pretty strong. Uh, on some of our longer range maps, Saris can suffer a little bit when her enemies are, are too far away. And also it's more throughput, right? Because it also has that extra second adding, so that's more healing. Um, which now, again, is being applied to more than one target, potentially, if they're near each other. So it's a large, uh, large addition of throughput. 
Uh, one viewer asks, what talents from each champion are we losing? So this is one example of a talent that's actually being reintegrated into the base kit. Uh, some of the talents that are going away are the ones that are least played, some of the ones that were interested in, or uh, introduced in OB64. Right. Uh, so really just depends on each champion, kind of which one is getting removed. Or that's, reworked. that's correct. And, and I don't want to dwell too much on it because we did go over that last patch. Mm -hmm. um, this one was, again, more about kind of the character ability specific changes. Um, but there might be some, some VODs or something or some recordings There's of that. on YouTube. Okay, yeah, cool. We talked pretty in depth about cool, it. Cool, cool, so. guys. Um, next, Zin, his counter. Uh, there's a pretty big change coming to that one that's really neat if you want to yeah. talk about that. Sure, sure, sure. So this one's really cool. Um, so right now, guys, uh, if you don't play Zin, um, he has his counter ability, which basically, like, puts his sword up here, and then if he takes damage from the front, he goes like that, and then performs a melee strike in front of him. Uh, and the way we're changing it is that instead of a melee strike, he is going to actually fire a projectile back at his crosshair. So you can be more effective um, at greater distances, and it's going to deal the same amount of damage that the the counter melee strike did. Um, it's just a, just a much better like thing that's gonna not force you to play up in people's faces like and you can actually angle it like i can trigger it by blocking the victor that's spraying me but face my camera at the genos enemy genos that's healing in the back line based on my positioning and allows a lot more player choice and skill to come into the equation than like am i next to my my target am i taking damage um and also the heal card for the loadout that's associated with this is seeing an increase in magnitude because previously that was bounce, uh, bounced, balanced around the retaliation legendary which is being removed so you won't you won't be able to like chain proc projectiles uh, now the healing value from the loadout card can be more substantial so if you counter you can get a little bit larger of a, a heal. Um, so going back to Saris really quickly and her Void Abides Restore Soul Changes, one viewer asks, does Mortal Reach affect the Void's ab Void Abides secondary effect? I believe Allies. no. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, so he's asking like what, uh, or she is mm -hmm. asking what the the link distance is, the bounce right, distance, right, right. I imagine. Um, the Mortal Reach will only be the like fr distance to the first target, the first recipient. So you won't be like healing your tank on point and then uh healing your flank who's zoning the enemy team in their spawn uh, that's unfortunately not how it's gonna work good ass though um all right next up we've got uh drogos with a couple of adjustments to worm jets oh that's right okay damn it i should have had a video for this so this one's a little harder to explain um however it's really cool, um, and I just had uh, Rude over actually this morning testing it. He was, it's got a seal of approval. Uh, so, Worm Jets is actually it's an interesting talent historically because it's underplayed and really effective. Um, and I know a lot of people scoff at stats whenever we quote them. They're we're like, the numbers don't mean anything. Um, but flying around with like that 40% movement boost had him winning substantially more than any other cards. But it's like, if that value isn't apparent to the players and nobody wants to play it, because it was also underplayed, right? So it's like, highly winning, underplayed. Um, it's a tough spot to be in. So what we've done is it's no longer going to be a flat movement speed boost on Worm Jets, because clearly people didn't find it interesting, didn't find it effective. Now what it's going to be is it's actually going to empower your jetpack. Um, meaning your when you when you drain your fuel and your booster propels your character up, you're going to accelerate up much higher, much faster. You're going to drain less fuel. So essentially, this is effectively the card that you want if you like, if I want to be like airborne drug and mm -hmm. If you build your loadout intelligently, um, again, exemplifying the strengths of Paladins and the depth that system represents, you can essentially stay, stay airborne indefinitely, depending on some situational things. But it's really impressive, it's really fun to play, and it's a long time coming. All right, next up, uh, Tyra and her base weapon. She's seeing an addition to her base weapon. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, so not as flashy as some of the other ones, but kind of a really cool add in terms of 
uh, sustainability for our, our, our Huntress. Um, we're killing the First Blood talent and integrating 15 or 20% lifesteal into Tyra's weapon base base functionality um thematically this fits with kind of that hunter vibe uh and also it's something that could benefit her greatly being that she is extremely lethal has very good zoning but suffers a lot because she can't move around the map as quickly so the mobility lack is going to attempt to be adjusted and counterbalanced by the fact that her main in hand which does substantial damage will now also be healing her so it should be cool <laughs> and um, next up, and if you guys have any questions about any of the ability changes that we've talked about, feel free to drop them in chat or anything you're curious about for Season 2. Um, another thing that I kind of wanted to touch on that we didn't get this chance to talk about too much last time was Terminus. So Terminus is seeing a few card changes, but I know what you guys really want to know is when is he getting fixed. Um, so I did kind of want to give you guys a heads up that our prog and our QA teams are working on fixing uh, several issues that Terminus currently has, hopefully in 2.01, but they're investigating those and they're looking into them. Um, and I've already reached out to a few people for more information on various bugs that they've had with him. So just wanted to give a heads up that we know about Terminus we know he needs a little love he's a little borked in some areas but um you know when you're a giant stone man that just dies and comes back to life over and over and over you're probably not going to be in a good place i mean mentally or physically so i mean that's not even the most pressing question i'm looking at chat right now Alyssa, and <laughs> I wasn't you know that one. you know exactly what <laughs> chat wants okay we see your spam in chat yeah. <laughs> um all right, but also there are a couple of extras. Uh, so the collision issues on a few maps. What's That's the right. team doing about that? So there was kind of a, a resurgence uh, of some video documentation of collision bugs, people breaking mm -hmm. the map, um, and we've gone through and reviewed each of the examples and also shored up um, some ones that weren't listed. So by all means, guys, please give a go. You you give it a go. Like try and try and find these ways to to exploit the map because we collision is a it's an interesting interesting beast of a of a problem to solve when you when you have maps like ours that have to be so intricate and service so many characters allow players to move through them very freely but at the same time adhere to some strict gameplay rules um but we should be fixing the majority of any and all issues that have been discovered at least thus far all right, we've got a few minutes before uh, we go into the Q&A where we're just going to be answering questions. So this might be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about Amani and her abilities or talents that players can expect in 2.01. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Amani, what have we, what is our, okay, so I think we haven't spoiled the talents, right? Like specifically? We haven't spoiled any of her talents or her cards and we haven't even really talked much about her abilities except at HRX. Okay, okay. So we can do a, a general general thing. And I'm also trying to look at chat in case there's no martini voice back. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't, nobody wants that. Um, let's see, give us talents. Okay, they want talents. Uh, more Alyssa announcer pack. Um, someone's saying I let Rain Day spoil a talent. Oh, this yes, is a good I question. Did. Uh, if you're making first blood into Tyra's base kit, would buying life rip have diminishing returns? Uh, depends on what rank, but yes. Um, but like you're probably not approaching that threshold, it, and if you are, it's pretty minimal. So like the value of getting life rip on top of anything else as Tyra is still probably pretty high especially combined with the fact that now again with the item store not being restrictive in the next season um you can choose to and i think we're also reducing the price of life rip uh just because it's something that people they don't need life rip right so we're, we're we are reducing the price of some of the ancillary items um and keeping the more valuable ones uh where they're at to kind of see how that plays out. But our, our goal is that we see a lot more variety and options and have players be able to choosing and creating a lot more interesting things with our characters. Because up until now, we've been very restrictive with that. Uh, da, 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 da. 
um, some custom game settings questions. I we don't have a time or a plan in the near future to do this, um, but is it a common ask? So I could see us allocating efforts in the future to do that. Um, the problem is there's a lot of big deliverables kind of right now that we're focusing on, um, and we should see some really awesome fruits from. But custom games uh, right now we have not the ultimate kind of sweet functionality that we like, um, but uh, we're able to make some minor improvements and kind of create a nice product. But I know people want the ability to like modify cooldowns or number of bots, bots difficulty, that kind of thing. Um, and we hear you. Uh, one viewer asked what's happening to Leon's death and taxes. So that's actually the talent that's getting removed for Leon. It's gone. Yeah, it is gone. And we talked it's all about the talents and items and loadouts in our uh, show last week. So you can find that whole VOD. I think it's almost an hour long on our YouTube channel. I saw a Makoa talent question in all caps, and now chat is real picking up, so I apologize because my old man eyes aren't going to be able to read it as fast. <laughs> um, it's moving uh, the fast. <laughs> ultimate spinny talent um, is going the way of the dinosaurs, unfortunately. Uh, didn't see a lot of play rate. Uh, and now I think I'm going to stop trying to read because I am not able to keep up. Um, but I can talk about Amani. Um, cause I, I imagine some of you guys are, are up to date. So I apologize cause this might be a, a refresh, a repeat info, but some of you guys maybe haven't. Um, Amani, as everyone knows, right, is our new damage class coming into the realm. And she is quite, quite the character. She does a really, really good job of embodying what a paladin's character should be and having interesting mechanics, powerful abilities. And she's, she's like pure fantasy because she is a damage battle mage that summons a dragon like you can't get more fantasy than that it's pretty ridiculous um but she has two stances fire and frost and you start off in ice stance ice stance is base and you're oh actually we did change something that is different than what the people at hrx saw hmm. ah so you have new info um so previously uh, swapping stances would have you do two in hands, right? Your ice in hand was a, or both, they both shared the same mechanic. They were both like a Shaolin bow draw mechanic, kind of, except instead of drawing a bow, you're casting a spell. Uh, and frost was supposed to be quicker, quicker casts, right? Like a little bit more, like quicker, um, and fire was like all about building up like this big pyre ball and then huck at your enemies. Uh, so it was like slow damage uh, and then fast damage. And what has changed actually, which I'm a really big fan of that defines the stances and makes them more unique is Frost is actually giving up the charge mechanic and moving to more like a straight, straight projectile refire. So what that means is like, you're just going like, projectile 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 and then when you get a clear cast proc projectile projectile clear cast projectile projectile um so it's a little bit more of a, a entirely different style of gameplay which really really separates it from that drawing up the big fireball and throwing it out um and that's brand new you guys are the first ones to hear about that uh and then her alt fire abilities in both of her stances are both really powerful with long cooldowns, but can turn the tides in most fights. So her ice alt fire is called Frost Bomb. And she just basically casts this giant ice ball and hucks it out. And it kind of like slowly just lumbers through there. Actually, I won't say too slow. It's pretty fast. It goes like, and as it's going through there, um, Amani is actually locked out, but you have the chance of like your, your hands right here like this. And if you reactivate the ability, you can like, and detonate it in midair. Um, and the farther it travels, the more damage it deals. Um, and it roots enemies for 1.2 or 3 seconds um, if it hits them. So this is a damage character with an ability that CCs, which is always very strong. Um, granted, it's counterbalanced by the fact that you're locked out when you're doing it, uh, and also has like a 20 second cooldown. So use it wisely. And the alt fire in your fire stance is also pretty cool. So it's called Inferno Cannon. Uh, what it does is Amani, uh, Amani essentially, it's more than just a root because you can, st you can like air stall too. It basically stops you moving in any access, right? So think of it, think of it a little bit in the nature of Shaolin's planted, um, but instead of like shooting arrows, you are channeling this giant beam of fire. 
um, that pierces enemies. So not as long of range, um, does less damage, but in the right situation, um, you can kill multiple people at the same time because of the piercing elements. Um, and it just looks really cool. Uh, and her movement ability is called Frostfire Glide. Do you know, do you know what Frostfire Glide does, Alyssa? It's it's Frozone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that character is, uh, but it's a it's a legally distinct ability um, in our title that has uh, Amani basically summon an ice surfboard with one elemental gauntlet, and then with the other elemental gauntlet, like propel jet booster fire out, and she just like f air ice fire surfs um, and carves up. The, the battlefield. It's really freaking cool, really cinematic, and feels awesome to just kind of cruise uh, along the realm's airways. Where's my <laughs> super suit? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'm getting a ton of questions in chat about Moji. So in our last oh, yes, we yes, talked yes. a little That's bit my fault. about yep. um, Moji and possibility of her being turned into a support. So any update on that? Yeah, so pretty pretty certain that we would like to do this um however this is not something that's going to happen in 2.01 uh larger scale reworks like this take time um but you can you can definitely probably expect it to to happen uh mm -hmm. we have a lot of really cool ways that we could imagine it she is a character with i guess a lot of facets that all could be kind of used to to base a support build around um and we're currently deciding which ones we want uh, and also scheduling out. But I wouldn't expect it soon, guys. Uh, we want to do it, but we want to do it right. Uh, also, a few questions about uh, Makoa's Leviathan. I believe Leviathan is remaining and... Staying the same. Staying the same. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, we officially are in the Q&A portion of today's stream, so any questions you guys have, drop them in chat, and Garrett and I will try to get to them. Uh, let's see... It's moving so fast. There are a lot of And problems. I'm distracted by the, the mermaid corgis. Yeah, love the, the mermaid corgis and the narwhals. Man, y'all are moving real fast. Okay, please go slower. Um, Genos, I see a lot of questions about Genos or any planned changes for his abilities or his talents. Yeah, okay, so Genos, let me see here. Uh, Genos kind of fa fell out right once furia kind of came onto the scene um and then through a couple other changes as well hasn't been as picked as much and always like the support situation in paladins is an interesting one right because it's like you typically typically only need one um oftentimes a single support character can meet the needs and then excel the needs if the player is good enough uh for the team and then oftentimes damage or flank or another frontline hell will be will be drafted um, but Genos, right? Genos is that large-scale, uh, long, hot throughput healer that is very slippery and can heal through walls. Um, so talents. The Celestial Touch one is being removed, and Astral Mark is going to receive that 5% burst heal or some percent burst heal base. Um, so you're going to get a little bit more upfront healing for Genos. They would like to see push him over into the... Uh, more main healer requirement, which is like, okay, how do I keep this throughput ticking over time and then have that option of like, oh, I need to save someone. I see some questions about Androxus. Is it questions or people just all well, caps just typing <laughs> Androxus, 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 Androxus? Androxus over and over. <laughs> I see, I see. Uh... What about, okay, now they're doing it for Eevee and Maldamba. All right, this is not the best effective way of communicating, I promise you guys. However, um, we'll, we'll try and pick the diamonds in the rough. Um, and it's becoming increasingly difficult. All right, if you guys have any questions specifically about some of the talents that we talked about last week or the item store, the loadouts, or um, definitely about any of the 
big ability changes that we talked about today. We discussed Khan, Maeve's guy, Sarah Zinn, Drogos, and Tyra today are all getting pretty big ability changes in Season 2. Uh, so we could go through every single one of the champions, but we'll be doing that on the update showcase itself. Uh, so let us know if you have any questions about what, specifically what we talked about today, and then we'll get into every single champion on the update showcase on the 20th. <laughs> Yeah, no, it should be really cool, guys. There's a lot of amazing content, a lot of amazing changes. Um, we're excited for this upcoming year. I really want to kick it off with a bang. <laughs> All right, chat's moving so fast, I can hardly keep up. Um, do, do, do. Uh, this is interesting. Persistent lobbies, I know that's something we had planned for 2019, but it's not for 2.01, correct? It is not represents a larger arc mm. of work. Uh, okay, so this might be the question that the Androxus spam was about. Will Androxus's punch be nerfed? Um, we've seen this topic kind of surface recently, and it's, it's, it's interestingly funny too because this talent existed for uh, a long time um, and was never really in the spotlight due to other selections being perceptually more viable um and now that those have received changes this one met all of a sudden manifests as like you know the the new hotness which is always funny to see um the so the punch the punch uh previously if you rewind time um i don't know six months eight months was essentially a dead ability it was memed in the community defiance was useless like i would rather shoot um so it was tuned up, right? The damage was increased. But okay, it's more opportunity cost, higher risk reward, get closer to hit harder, right? Um, when really that wasn't the issue. The issue is that the delivery method, the application style was too difficult. Um, like the, the opportunities that it was uh, valuable in just were so seldom. Um, so the tuning attempt where the range was increased was meant for confirmability. This was supposed to be to strengthen the usability of it. It's not going to be a dead ability in your kit because it's far more confirmable. Um, the issue is that it retained the previously uh, tuned damage for that punch when it was not one foot in front of Androxus's face. So in this patch, we will be reducing the damage of the punch from 700 to... I forgot what the exact figure is, but it's it's going to be the exact same as his in-hand shot. So it's no longer going to be that spike element. However, you're going to need to weave it into your shots, whether you're trying to avoid a reload or don't trust your left click accuracy in that given moment and feel like that punch is a more, I guess, confirmable method of dealing the same amount of damage. Um... One question I got a few times over the past week, um, we talked about last week how you'll, you're will you not restricted to one section of the item store now. You'll be able to buy multiple different items Correct. in the same category. Right. Um, are there going to be price increases there? So if you buy you know, two items from the same category, is the second one going to cost much, much more? No. There isn't going to be any dynamic price scaling or anything like that. Um, prices may change compared to what they are now, but there's not going to be a confusing rule where something scales up when you make a decision down here and later down in the tree it costs more for an abstract reason. Um, there were also a few questions over the past week of why is this called Season 2? Because um, a lot of people sure, expected sure. it to be Season 3. Uh, so the reason we did this is this is the second season that were actually released as a live game. And it would also be super confusing if, you know, the next year patches, they're going to be 2.01, 2.02, uh, which, by the way, that corresponds to the month. So there's going to be a new patch every month. So it's going to go, go all the way up to 2.12. Um, but it wouldn't really make sense for us to be in season three if the patch nomenclature was two. Um, and this is also our second season that we're fully released as a game. So that's why it's season two. <laughs> if you really like the number three, I guess you're just going to have to stick with us until the following season. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll be season three. It'll be fun. We promise. All right. Lots
lots of various champion specific questions we will be going over every single champion in the update showcase uh, so if there's any we didn't cover today or last week and if you guys want to learn more about the talent changes or the loadout changes or the item store changes you can find the full hour long VOD on our YouTube channel where we went really in depth on that and a lot of champion specific talents as well gotcha gotcha nice all right, where? Oh my. I love your guys' enthusiasm. This is impressive. <laughs> also, I saw someone say, all caps, more tanks, three angry faces. Soon. Soon. Um, some questions about EV talent. Which EV talent is getting removed? Over the moon was the EV talent that's mm. going the way of the dinosaurs. Which was the damage bonus after Soar. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. Okay, okay. I'm doing my best here. I'm doing my best. One guy said clan system, and then the next guy said clam system. Clam system. <laughs> yes, to both. <laughs> No, we do have claims planned for 2019, but uh, 2.01 is going to be a huge patch just in itself because we've got Season 2, Animani, and Crossplay and Cross Progression, so those are three pretty giant things, but you can't yep. expect persistent <laughs> lobbies and clans throughout the rest of the year. Uh, we will have one big patch every month. Should be pretty cool. I think I saw a a change to Strix question, yes. And specifically his flare ability has been uh, actually more so unauthorized use has just come up as the the current resident meme. Um so kind of taking a philosophy shift on unauthorized use. The the idea, right, the fantasy behind unauthorized use, even in the name itself, was that you are using flare in a method that is different, quotation marks, unauthorized, than intended, right? And previously, its intention was to reveal enemies. And that's why we increase the damage, we increase the projectile speed, because the the, the joke was that you're trying to hit players with it, um, and that use was unauthorized. Um, so in the spirit of that, uh, we're going to make, we're going to emphasize that functionality with some changes and remove the fact that your flare with unauthorized use no longer reveals. So if you go into an authorized use, your flare you are giving up the fact that your flare was revealing in a radius around it. Um, and we're also going to increase the projectile speed and make it a little bit more confirmable um, as that kind of pistol-based burst option to maybe kind of for all my pistol strixes out there. Um, but it's retaining the CDR, so you're still going to have the opportunity to shoot a lot of flares. They're just not going to reveal enemies. Uh, one viewer asks about the announcer pack rewards for ranked, and it might be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about what players can expect for the ranked rewards. Absolutely. Um, so I think we're swapping around uh, what is given when. Because we have a couple of different qualifiers in our rank rewards. It's like, play 100 games, get 200 wins, qualify. So typically, or formally, I believe we had gold. Gold 5 was, I think, the requirement for the Vivian skin. Um, and now we are going to translate, or not translate, excuse me, move the sk epic skin reward for uh, next season to one of the number of uh, wins requirement. Um, we're also going to give, instead of an announcer pack, we're going to give a limited avatar uh, for the qualification that is pretty hilarious. I hope you like it. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, we just put it in today, actually. And then some of the other rewards will also be shifting from their, their, their I guess, uh, current column of how they're distributed all right i think that about wraps it up for us today so just to 
recap, we talked a lot about champion specific ability changes. So really huge. And then last week, of course, we talked about what else you can expect in season two. This will be a VOD on YouTube. So if you missed the first part of it or any part of it, you can either go back through the VOD on Mixer or check our YouTube in the next couple of days. Um, our update showcase is going to be on December 20th. And then we're going to have an extended PTS. It's almost three and a half weeks, I think, for this patch, just because there's so one. much to test. Uh, so be sure to tune in here on Mixer on December 20th for the update show. Uh, we had downtime this morning uh, for two different things. So we just finished up all of the database maintenance for crossplay and cross progression, Ooh, which will also exciting. be introduced in this patch. This is the last part of it. So thank you guys for bearing through all the downtime. Um, and then also update 1.9 is coming out to PC today. It might actually be up now. I don't know. I haven't checked. It oh, wasn't baby. when I came over here. But, <laughs> um, it either is out live now on PC or it's about to be. And then I also just got word that console is go for tomorrow. So all consoles will receive the 1.9 patch tomorrow. Beautiful. And I think that about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any more questions, feel free to message us on Twitter and we'll try to get to them. Uh, but we will talk about every single champion in the update show on the 20th. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, Martini. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.